Let's see what the card does around this bit, shall we? So it's going, it's crossed. Oh, it's crossed the lane. It's crossed the lane and it's still going. Welcome back everybody to Tesla Driver. I hope you're doing very well and I hope you've been okay during this lockdown period. I haven't been able to record obviously, but now I am able to record because we're able to go out and drive for a lot more reasons and I can now film my journey. So today, what I thought I would do is show you how is autopilot and full self-drive currently acting in 2020. We haven't driven it for a couple of months now and uh, there have actually been a couple of updates. Now in America, there is a new update floating around where it will stop and start at traffic lights for you which is really cool but also the animations have now changed so the animations for people and for bikes and stuff have changed in America and it actually gives the person on screen a direction of travel and it smoothly animates their legs and stuff it looks pretty cool sadly we don't have it here but obviously as soon as we get it I'll make sure to show it to you now this is a journey I've done quite a lot on autopilot before actually it was one of my first videos I ever did on the channel in the Tesla Model X if you want to go back and compare it and we're going to see how does it compare now obviously we've got full self-drive visualization so you could see there the arrows on the road were looking really good uh, it's showing the double lines as well there which is working really well and we can bring it up a lot faster previously I could never go over 40 down this road and it do it okay whereas now I can actually go at the full 60 speed limit if I wanted to and it would do it absolutely fine this is always a big issue for it. It's kind of a tightish bend going up a hill and the car previously used to dart around a little bit, but as you can see now, absolutely no problems at all. Showing the cars on the other side of the road as well. Actually, it's showing them nice and early as well. I have noticed that it seems to be picking up a lot more stuff on the visualization. This is gonna be interesting. The car braking nicely. Okay, so it came down to 30 there. So we lost 20 miles an hour. It was quite a hard brake, but it was definitely the sort of brake it needed to do to make sure we were safe there. So this bit's actually changed since the first drive. You can see now it's a 50 here, uh, whereas before this used to be a 60 all the way through. So you can see the car doesn't change its mind. It still says it's a 60. That's because it's still not picking up these road signs ahead of us. Uh, and it's just going with what the GPS says. And again, previously here, this never, never did this area. Now you can see that the pavement's quite tight and everything here. It used to get way too close to the pavement and it actually used to dart in here. Let's see if it does it. No, you can see now it doesn't do that at all and it brings us through really safely. So all they need to update on that bit is the speed limit and to be able to pick up these new active speed limits, which apparently Elon tweeted previously that they have almost got sorted. And here's a really big one, guys. Elon tweeted this morning that he expects full self-drive to be valued at 100,000 pounds when the full version comes out. It's currently on sale at like four or five thousand pounds and he's trying to say that that will be worth a hundred thousand pounds when the system is complete. So, so far, so good. This bit of road, absolutely no problems. I wouldn't have had to bring it off myself here at all. Um, oh, interesting. Okay, so we're now going on to a road with no road markings. And let's see how the car fares with this. It's done this road loads and loads of times before, so it shouldn't have a problem with it. Absolutely no problem. Look at this. This is doing it really well. I've got my hand on the wheel just in case. But that has done this incredibly well. And it's sticking to the left-hand side with, with no... I'm not even worried about it at all. But obviously, we're coming up to a roundabout, so I'm going to have to take control myself. Let's see what it does here then. So we've got some <clears throat> we've got some pylons in the middle of the road that I assume it's going to think are cones. Yeah, you can see it's thinking of them as cones there. And then what's it going to do here? We do we don't have right away, but we should go around this pole. And you can see absolutely not going to happen there. That is yeah, that is still something. So again, even though there's cones there, the car not slowing down for it. Yeah, it's it didn't see that at all. It did not see that at all, and it was just happily driving me into it, which is uh, really quite bad, actually. I'm having to take control here as well because there's no lines on the road. And now it says it will drive, but I'm not too confident here. I'm thinking it's going to break. Oh, okay. Well, actually, we went to the right-hand side of the road there. So you can see as soon as we get off the kind of main roads, we start having problems again. Uh, but this is something that this car is going to have to work itself around one day is roads like this with lorries on them. This corner here used to be a little bit too much for the car. So when it previously went around this corner, it did break on and off. So if we go under 49, 
I'll be getting the same kind of experience. But currently, it's actually sticking at 49. Oh, we've got something crossing the road. No squirrel. Oh, God, it darted back. Thank God for that. So no problems there. The road does split here into two. So let's see. I assume it's going to pick the right-hand side. It has picked the right-hand side, which is quite good because that guy was on and off the road on his uh, lawnmower, and I don't think he even realized. So here we go again. It's not breaking for any of these for me uh, in the UK yet. It's not bothered by the traffic lights. It's literally just showing them. I'm going to bring it down to 25, and let's see, let's see what the car does around this bit shall we so it's going it's crossed oh it's crossed the lane it's crossed the lane and it's still going okay i'm just gonna put my hand on oh okay it's slowing down it's trying to go left so sorry right it was trying to go right down there but we actually want to keep on going straight on so it, it crossed the lane there without me saying i actually did keep my foot on the accelerator because i i felt that the car was going to stop so i thought mm, let's keep it going Again, a nice tight corner, but you can see it's slightly swinging out a little bit too wide there. So I had to bring it back in myself. And again, here, autopilot not wanting to not wanting to turn on with all of this stuff around it. This here, for example, is a really, really tight corner that I just I don't think the car is going to be able to do. I'm going to bring it all the way down to 10 and see. No, you see that there is about maximum amount. That was about maximum lock there of the Tesla that you just saw it really isn't it isn't a big lock here in the UK it doesn't go very far so we've got kind of um, a one-way road here that hopefully it should go down quite nicely because there's quite a lot of lines yeah picking up the cars picking up the cones doing well here I'm hoping it's just gonna follow us straight up here as well which it has done is it gonna pick the left lane no, it's going to pick the right lane. So we'll just sit behind here at the lights. This gives us our first good look at lights, though. So you can see here again, it's pretty hard for us to see the light up at the top left. And the car can't see it. It knows it's there, but it doesn't know what color it is. So it's going off of that one light over there for coloring. So on roads like this, I know that it just won't squeeze through here, especially with the car on the other side of the road. Even though that car is parked, it wouldn't have squeezed past there. And we would have got some really weird kind of braking okay so here the road markings do disappear slightly there's like one in the middle of the road there and it is sticking to the left hand side of the road which is good it's picking up the bins as well of course on the side of the road is it picking up these pylons yes very very slightly it picked up one or two. Oh, interesting it breaks very hard there for that person so even though that person was on the pavement it breaks very very hard for it thinking that potentially she was on the road or it was going to be a problem of some sorts Again, no problem around these corners. We do hit the limit still for turning, so that is definitely one thing. I feel I'm repeating myself, but it is definitely the speed, uh, being able to change the speed and slow itself down by itself. This person slightly, is it gonna pick it up? No, it didn't pick her up. It actually picked her bag up as a cone. Did you see that? It actually, I thought it was gonna pick her up, but it in fact picked her bag up as a cone. Is it picking the cyclist up? No, didn't pick the cyclist up. However, it did pick up and show the bin. Is it going to pick up these cones? Yes, of course. Picks up the cones, no problem. And again, coming up to a red light, it's not going to stop us. So I have to pull it back and stop ourselves. However, you will see there is now a nice line on the road where the car would stop, uh, which is pretty cool. So it, it shows you where the line is, where the car's going to be stopping. Uh, and actually, it's picking up a couple of bollards there. It didn't change to orange, it went straight to green again. So it's still not gonna be changing to orange just yet. And here it's really tucking hard to the right hand side of the road. Now it's going back to the middle. I think because it was a very wide road, it was slightly confused. So we've had some A roads, we've had some town slash city, I guess, driving there. And now we're going on to the motorway for a little section of motorway driving. So again, we're coming up to the red light. It thinks the stop is all the way back there, interestingly enough, which it wasn't. So we would have actually stopped way, way earlier. Now, this is the real test coming up for it on the motorway here. So Navigate on Autopilot is on and we've got a kind of a junction coming up where basically it needs to stay in this lane. So we need to be in this middle lane and then the middle lane actually chops off into two lanes and it needs to take the left lane. Now, I have never 
and I repeat, never successfully done this in this car. So what we're gonna do today is I'm gonna let the car do everything. I'm gonna do exactly what the car tells me to do. Uh, so if it says to change lanes, etc., etc., I'm gonna do it. And we're gonna see if the car can in fact do this junction. It's never been able to do it before. It's right next to a Tesla service center here in Bristol. So let's see. So it's asking us to change to the third lane and I'm actually, I'm actually not gonna do that because that would make me look like such a douche. I've got cars behind me and around me, and if I just sat in the third lane, yeah, that wouldn't be the coolest looking move. So the Ford Ranger's coming, and so is that lorry, actually. Okay, here we go. Now, now we can change into that third lane. That Skoda was whizzing through. So we'll go over now into this third lane. And you can see here from the signs, it clearly says we need to be in that middle lane. So we're the M5 North. We need to be in that middle lane there. The car says that we need to be in that middle lane as well. So again, we're just gonna let the car decide when we move over. Okay, it's asking us to move over now. So let's get ourselves into that lane. This car's coming across, but that shouldn't be a problem. And it's actually asking us now to get into that first lane, or at least it did for us. It's still asking us, interesting. So, are we meant to be in that first lane or aren't we? What is the car deciding to do here? It's still not 100% sure. We've got someone coming down that left lane anyway. It's not a lorry, it's a VW. Same emissions as a lorry, but hey. Um, it's still asking us to get into that left lane. So let's, let's do it. Let's confirm the left lane change. Even though I know specifically, categorically, we need to be in that right hand lane here. So you can see we're, we're going M5 North, the Midlands, Gloucester, and this is not the right lane. So if you look here on the light lane on the right, you'll see this is where it splits into two here, and we should be following that Ford. We should be where that Ford is right now, and we should just be doing that. But currently it's asking us to stay in this lane, and we're still staying in this lane. It's slowing us down, so that's brought the speed limit down, but we need to get across here like now, like now, there we go, now it's asking us. Okay, so it's not sure, I think, about that little fork area. And basically, instead of giving it a go, it's putting us into lanes where it knows that it can just like actually change lanes rather than navigating it itself. So again, hands off the wheel completely here, just so you can see, 50 miles an hour. I normally do this at about 60-ish. So 50 is really not hard. Let's just make sure it doesn't conk out on us. Okay, so it's speeding us back up here, 55. Now it's 60 miles an hour. There's no cars over there on the left. And it's still, it's sticking at 60. So this here is indicating left, which is very strange. No idea why it's indicating left. This is actually one lane now. So this turns into one lane. Let's see what the car does. The car's brought us over to the left. And so far, it, Actually, that was very, oh, okay, so he's flashing us over there. So I think we've got speed cameras up ahead. Uh, so we've got, to be, we've got to be careful. I'm pretty sure there's gonna be speed cameras up here. But that was actually really, really smooth. No problems at all. And you can see it is asking us to lane change. So I think it is slightly confused. It does want us to get into that lane slightly too early or it's a little bit too prompt for it. But yeah, that actually did that really, really well. We're coming off in just under a mile to supercharge. So let's see how this brings us off the motorway here and see what it asks us to do. You can see that it's actually pre-conditioning the battery for supercharging. So it is getting itself all ready and excited to get supercharging. And even though we're only 0.7 miles away, it's not asking us to get into that left lane yet. It did just put a line up there. There we go. So now it's putting that line up for us. And we're in that first lane. And so I have done this a couple of times, and again, it is, it's fairly successful, but it can be a little bit hit and miss. Let's see what it decides to do when it decides to slow down. There you go. So you can see here, construction detected. It is slowing us down though. We're going down to 60, 55, 50. Well, oh, this feels so slow. <laughs> 50, okay, it's sticking at 50 here, and it's just going straight. Oh, it's speeding us up, 55. And yeah, now it's going a little bit wobbly, taking us over to the right-hand side here. And what's it gonna do? Is it actually gonna take us around this corner? Let's go, let's go. It is, it's doing it, it's doing it. 
You can see though, big speed bump, no problem, crossing, no one's here. And there we go, the car is driving us very nicely into our destination. So there we have it everybody, there is full self-driving after lockdown, our first drive since lockdown. What do you think? Let me know. Is it going to be the $100,000 option that Elon says it's going to be, or do you think it still needs uh, a lot of work? I still think it needs work. I can't see it ever costing $100,000. I can't see anyone ever paying $100,000 for a self-driving car, so let's see how it goes. Thank you all so much for watching, and until the next update, don't forget, drive safe.